Here are some very general rules for DNA viruses. Remember for the boards that there are exceptions to these rules, but when in doubt and you need to guess, these rules may come in handy. So remember that for all DNA viruses, they are happy viruses, and we'll explain that in a minute. They're all double-stranded, they're linear, they're icosahedral in shape, and they replicate within the nucleus. Now, where does the happy come from? H-H-A-P-P-P-P. -P -P -P. So those are your DNA viruses. Hepadna, herpes, adeno, pox, parvo, papilloma, and polyoma. What's the exception for the double-stranded rule? Remember that one, it's parvo, the little one, single-stranded DNA. What's the exception for linear? Remember, they're all linear except papilloma and polyoma, which are circular and supercoiled, and hepadna, the hepatitis B virus, which is circular and incomplete. They're all icosahedral except for the pox virus, which has a complex capsid shape, and they all replicate in the nucleus, the exception being the pox virus. Again, remember that the pox virus is kind of a bigger virus that carries its own DNA-dependent RNA polymerase and doesn't require the cellular machinery. Let's take a look at the different DNA virus families. Remember, we can categorize all of these and characterize them by whether or not they have an envelope, what their DNA structure is, and then we'll talk about the medically important viruses of each family. Starting with herpes viruses, these do have an envelope. They're double-stranded linear DNA genomes. The medically important members of this family are HSV1, which causes oral and occasionally genital lesions, spontaneous temporal lobe encephalitis, and carotid conjunctivitis. HSV2 causes genital and sometimes oral lesions. VZV, or HHV3, is the chicken box and zoster virus and causes shingles. EBV, or HHV4, is the causative agent of infectious mononucleosis, as well as associated with Burkitt's lymphoma. CMV, or HHV5, is most associated with infection in immunocompromised patients. It can cause AIDS retinitis, and we can also see it in transplant recipients as well. It can cause congenital defects if acquired during pregnancy. HHV6 is associated with roseola, or exanthem subitum. HHV7 is clinically insignificant and included only to complete the family. HHV8 is associated with Kaposi sarcoma associated herpes virus or KSHV. Hepatinovirus is another family. It's also enveloped. It has a double-stranded genome that's partially circular. The important virus here is HBV, so we can see acute or chronic hepatitis B. Remember there's a vaccine available that contains HBV surface antigen. This is not a retrovirus, but it does have reverse transcriptase. Adenovirus is the next family. It's non-enveloped and has a linear double-stranded genome. Importantly here, we have febrile pharyngitis, which we see sore throat, or acute hemorrhagic cystitis. We can also see pneumonia and conjunctivitis or pink eye. Parvovirus is a non-enveloped linear single-stranded DNA virus. It's the smallest DNA virus. B19 virus is the important virus here. It's associated with aplastic crises and sickle cell disease, the slapped cheeks rash that's seen in children, erythema infectiosum or fifth disease. The red blood cell destruction in the fetus associated or infected with a parvovirus leads to hydrops fatalis and death. Pure red blood cell aplasia and rheumatoid arthritis-like symptoms in adults can also be seen. Papillomavirus is a non-enveloped, circular, double-stranded genome DNA virus. The major virus here is HPV, which can cause warts, especially serotypes 1, 2, 6, and 11, CIN, cervical cancer, especially serotypes 16 and 18. Remember, there's a vaccine available for the HPV. Polyomavirus is non-enveloped as well. It also has a circular, double-stranded genome. And its virus is the JC virus, which causes progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, or PML, which is typically seen in HIV patients. Remember that papillomavirus and polyomavirus are two new classifications originally grouped as papovavirus. The last virus is the pox virus. It is enveloped. It has a linear double-stranded DNA genome, and it's the largest DNA virus. 
It's associated with smallpox. Although eradicated, it could be used possibly in germ warfare. Vaccinia, or cowpox, the milkmaid's blisters from history, and also the causative agent of molluscum contagiosum, which is a fre flesh-colored dome-shaped lesion with a central dimple. Let's speak specifically about the herpes virus family. Remember, there's several medically important herpes viruses within this family. The first one is HSV1, or herpes simplex virus type 1. This causes gingival stomatitis, keratoconjunctivitis, temporal lobe encephalitis. It's actually the most common cause of sporadic encephalitis in the United States, and it often causes herpes labialis, which might be what it's most known for, cold sores. The route of transmission for HSV1 is through respiratory secretions and saliva. HSV2 is most commonly associated with herpes genitalis, or genital herpes, as well as neonatal herpes, which babies can become infected with as they pass through the birth canal. The route of transmission is sexual contact and also perinatally, as I just mentioned. BZV, or varicella zoster virus, causes varicella zoster, or shingles. It can cause encephalitis, and it also causes pneumonia, as well as causing the common infectious chickenpox. It's transmitted through respiratory secretions. A great mnemonic for remembering the herpes viruses is to remember that you can get herpes in a Chevrolet, C-H-E-V, that's C-M-V, H-S-V, E-V-V, and V-Z-V. Other members of the herpes virus family include E-B-V, C-M-V, H-H-V-6, and H-H-V-8. E-B-V causes infectious mononucleosis. It's associated with Burkitt's lymphoma and also associated with nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Its route of transmission is through respiratory secretions and saliva. CMV causes congenital infections. It's also associated with mononucleosis, but a negative monospot test in contrast to what we see with the EBV, and can cause pneumonia as well. Infected cells with CMV have characteristic owl's eye appearance. It's transmitted congenitally through the placenta, or through transfusion, or through sexual contact, saliva, or through a urine transplant. HHV6 causes roseola, which is associated with high fevers for several days that can cause seizures, followed by a diffuse macular rash. The route of transmission for HHV6 has still not been determined. HHV8 causes Kaposi sarcoma, mostly associated or seen in HIV patients, and its transmission is through sexual contact. Remember with herpes viruses, they can remain latent in the ganglia or in cells. HSV1 is in the trigeminal ganglia, HSV2 usually found in the sacral ganglia, VZV can be seen in the trigeminal and dorsal root ganglia, EBV can be found latently in B cells, and CMV in mononuclear cells. The identification of HSV can be done through what we call a Zank test, or a Zank smear. It's a smear of an open skin vesicle to detect multinucleated giant cells. We can use this assay not only for HSV1 and 2, but also for varicella zoster virus. Infected cells also have intranuclear cowdery A inclusions, so if that comes up on the boards, you should think about HSV. A way to remember this is to remember, thank heavens I do not have herpes. Let's talk specifically for a minute about Epstein-Barr virus or EBV. Remember, this is one of the herpes viruses, and it causes mononucleosis. It infects B cells specifically, so with EBV, what you can oftentimes see is an increase in the number of white blood cells, and think about where those live, lymph nodes and spleen. So with an EBV infection, you want to think about fever, hepatosplenomegaly, including splenic rupture, pharyngitis, where your tonsils are, and lymphadenopathy, especially the posterior cervical nodes. The peak incidence for EBV infection is between 15 and 20 years of age, and we also see abnormal circulating cytotoxic T cells, or atypical lymphocytes, on a CBC with differential. Since it's most commonly transmitted and acquired during the peak kissing years, it's also known as the kissing disease. EBV has also been associated with development of Hodgkin's and endemic Burkitt's lymphomas, as well as nasopharyngeal carcinomas. We can diagnose EBV using a positive monospot test, in which heterophilic antibodies are detected by agglutination of cheap red blood cells. 